Yeah, this is a man I could talk to all night long, and he is my um, he is my official, by the way, my official co-host. He is uh, the author of one of the most important books of the decade. The book is The Battle for the Soul of Islam, An American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. He is the president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He is my good friend, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Welcome back, Doc. Oh, it's great to be with you, Seth. I, I'm, I'm humbled by the promotion. Wow, I, th- th- this is awesome. I, I need to put out a press release or something. Yeah, and you need to block out four weeks in August, by the way. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no Coronado for you <laughs> or wherever you doctors go these days. Okay. <laughs> when I was young, doctors went, a lot of Phoenicians went to Coronado. Where do they go now in August? Where do, you, where do people go? Uh, I never golfed on Wednesdays, and I don't go where all the doctors. <laughs> okay. uh, my yeah. vacation are going to Saudi Arabia last year uh, yeah. to uh, avoid imprisonment with the U.S. Commission. <laughs> Perfect. You'll forgive me if I prefer Coronado, though. Yes. Okay. No, I agree. Okay, <laughs> Doctor Jasser. Uh, some serious issues before us. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to begin. You and I have written a lot about um, the heckler's veto. We've written a lot about the inanity of the soft, really the the reverse bigotry of 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 people who think that it's 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 appropriate to self censor, um, and we've talked a lot about the terrorist threat that exists inside America, and all of this comes to the fore, of course, given the events over the, uh, the past weekend, and interesting to me, ISIS may very well be here, may very well be in Texas and Arizona. It looks like. And I also want to get to the wisdom, not really even the wisdom, but the appropriateness, really, of what was done on Sunday, even before the shooting began. But go ahead and you take it from here, and I'll weigh in in a moment. Well, I do think, you know, I look at it, the analogy I like to use is sort of like that drunk who's walking through the streets who has anger and violent ten- tendencies, and then someone decides to go up and poke him in the eye and and, uh, you know, where's the problem? The problem's in the drunk. Why is he drinking? Why does he have a substance problem? And why is he violent? And that's what I'm dedicated to. Now, was it smart to poke him in the eye? You know, I guess, yeah, if he's running 56 countries and a quarter of the world's population, and he's in an organized fashion distributing that uh, toxin, which I call political Islam, through a draconian form of Sharia that needs reform, I think it's relevant. Now, are there smart ways to do that? Uh, I'm not sure that what was done in Garland was necessarily strategic or smart and engaging our community in a constructive way. But, you know, I think it's sort of like getting cockroaches out. You know, if it's some type of uh, covert operation where the Bureau is trying to get ISIS recruits out, it's uh, the saddest part to me was that a police officer had to get shot course, in the leg in order to, to find these guys. Uh, but, uh, you know, the... The biggest crime I heard this week was the imam of his mosque yesterday on local local TV saying that the reason he got radicalized was the FBI. Yeah, right. I mean, that is the story where you have a pathology in a community that blames the Bureau for doing informant work uh, in, in finding this guy where the mosque here in Phoenix gave him $100,000 bail to get this guy out of jail because they were writing in their newspapers, as Breitbart posted, Back in 06 now, they showed a, a piece in which they were telling the Muslim community to avoid the FBI, etc. That's the bigger story. That is the bigger story. It's it's a version of the, well, it's the version of a lot of uh, insane and upside-down claims. It, it's the FBI that caused them to do it, yes, and it's auto theft laws that cause auto thieves, right? Dr. Jasser, we may be on the same page, we may not be, I'm not sure. Um, I have to confess, I kind of look at this... And we'll get to the we'll get to the ISIS threat, and we'll get to the terrorism threat, and I make absolutely no apologies for it, none whatsoever. I think I have a pretty good track record on that. But my point is a little different about what Pamela Geller did, and that is to say, I you know I will defend to the hilt cartoonists who are in the business of satire, and I will defend to the hilt that that's what they do. If you're going to insult Jews and Christians, then you know Islam is also fair game. It just is. That's what they do. But what I cannot understand and what I cannot get on board with is actively seeking out to offend a religion, and not just a part of it, but all of it, to particularly host a contest 
that you know is insulting to an entire religion, you know, why? I, I, I do not think if we are engaged in a battle of, that's a clash of civilization, if we're engaged in a battle of ideas, if we are doing our utmost best by being our utmost small d Democrats to say, you know what, freedom is the best friend of Islam. And Muslims are more free in America than anywhere else. I do not see why we would go out of our way or why people would go out of their way to actively insult an entire religion. I'm not on board with that. I'm making a subtle distinction I hope is not lost here. I'm not sure if, 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 you're, if you're following what I'm trying to say here. Oh, I, I could not agree more. I, I will tell you that I, I feel sort of in a weak position to say anything about that because the moral, as you're not doing any moral equivalencies, I think obviously when... People are getting shot. It's a whole different story. It's a but, subtle distinction we're making yeah. now. It's a very subtle point, but go ahead with it, please. But I think ultimately, you know, you look at Charlie Hebdo, the 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 Cart- magazine this week released a press release and said, "Hold on, don't confuse us with right. Geller." I'm with because that because we criticize all religions. Right. That's my point. Islam. Right. And I think you're right. It's interesting that 142 scholars refused to let the Hebdo magazine satirists be awarded major global awards. Shame on them. Shame on them. Yeah, exactly, because of that. So it's such a fine line, but I will tell you, if people Google my name and Geller, they'll see that you are right, because she and many of that, they call themselves the anti-jihad community, have, it's a dead end. What is their solution? Is their solution, it's either to convert a quarter of the world's population, or if you're going to accept that they're going to remain Muslims, then you have to bond and engage with Muslims that have a version of Islam, you know, to call it a cult, to call our prophet uh, a pedophile and all these other things. Fine, they have a free speech to do that. That's right. But that is a dead end to which you're basically creating a, a, a inevitable self-fulfilling prophecy of violent conflict. Well, that's absolutely right. It is a dead end because you're, you're not going to convert— and uh, frankly, one of those, at least one of those two religions, as between Christianity and Judaism, is not in the business of conversion. It shouldn't be by its own dictates. It dis, it, you know, it, it discourages, if, if not in most instances, forbids conversion. Quite frankly, and 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 I got to tell you, I, I I do not understand the notion that if we are going to convince a large element of a community that is at war with us, that, uh, that, that, that it is their fault, I, I, I simply do not understand. I simply cannot comprehend. I, I do not get the end game of, of encouraging, yes, in some cases, children to hate and sa- b- 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 by a contest which, which, which is a religious assault. That's what it is. It's a religious assault. The answer be- should not be violence. God knows. But what, as you say, Jesuti, you're right. What we tolerate and what we permit isn't something we necessarily have to command. There is a difference there. Yeah, I mean, Russ Duhat said it the best. In the New York Times, of all places, in January, when he wrote a piece on the blasphemy we need, he said, if a large enough pe- if a large enough group of someone is willing to kill you for saying something, then it's something that almost certainly needs to be said. Yeah. Because otherwise the violent have that... Heckler's veto over liberal civilization. Nice. And when that scenario obtains it, it isn't really a liberal civilization anymore. And I think he's right. Right back. One second. We'll be right back with you. One moment. Pleased and privileged and honored to be rejoined by Dr. Zudi Jasser, author of The Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim patriot's fight to save his faith, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Right before the break, doctor, you were making the point about what, a, what, 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 what true liberalism really is, and you were quoting Ross Duthat. Go ahead and do that again. We'll pick up on it, and then we'll get to the bigger threat. But go right ahead. If you don't mind re- reprising that point, it was valuable, I thought. Yeah, he said, if a large enough group of someone is willing to kill you for saying something, then it's something that almost certainly needs to be said, because otherwise the violent have veto power over liberal civilization. And when that scenario obtains, it really isn't liberal civilization anymore. And, you know, I think he's 100% right, and that's the value 
of standing behind the ability of people to mock. And it's interesting, theologically, Seth, uh, the greatest blasphemy in Islam is actually uh, denying God. Mm -hmm. And and these people aren't killing atheist conventions. Mm -hmm. The reason they identify the Prophet Muhammad as particular, even though if you go to the Supreme Court in America, there are busts of people that have contributed to uh, Western law. Sure. There is a bust in the Supreme Court that I used to take with my family to see of Muhammad. Of course. At, at our Supreme Court. Of course. So, I mean, to say that there's an image of him there, nobody's having a big deal about that. So the issue is of Islamo nationalism. Yeah. But the, the criticism of the Prophet Muhammad through a caricature is like burning the Islamist flag, and that's why they get all enraged, and it's nothing about major theological offense. Yes. We can't have images of the Prophet because of fear of deification of, of Muhammad, but it's all about theopolitics and not about necessarily theology. That's right, and 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 neither of us, neither of us, are saying that 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 this was invited. This violence was invited by that conference. We're simply saying these conferences are unnecessary and frankly unhelpful in the war of ideas that needs to be waged here. Now, having said all that, Doctor, talk to me about this. Um, well, very much could very well be, well, very much looks like it is perhaps part of an ISIS cell in America. Yeah, and, and you know, what is ISIS? Is it a membership uh, organization that has uh, cards? And, you know, it's a movement for Islamo nationalism. And this guy uh, put out a tweet to uh, Simpson, uh, uh, previously Ibrahim, uh, saying that he took allegiance to ISIS 20 minutes before he did it. His avatar was Awlaki. Uh, which was an al-Qaeda cleric that now has become one of the icons for the movement. So whether it's al-Qaeda, ISIS, these are Islamists that are trying to create the caliphate, and ISIS took credit for it. Did they plan it? I doubt it, but we don't know for sure. But they're in 50 states. It's a very, it's one of the, mo it's the most potent Islamist movement we've seen in America since 9-11, if not even including al-Qaeda at the time of 9-11, which was only 19 guys. This is in every state. And it's because of the Arab awakening, where you have social media. I've been attacked and threatened uh, on Twitter and social media by local ISIS folks who I forwarded to the Bureau and else, and I don't know what happens with it. Our Bureau people are very under-resourced and under-skilled, really, in understanding the theopolitical threat. You know, I think you said it all when you said it's a potent force, whether these guys were members or whether it's a membership organization or not. That's kind of the point. I was pulling my hair out, as I know you were, after we first saw the beheadings of James Foley, etc., uh, by ISIS, when people were saying, well, they're not that big of a threat. Heck, our president said they were junior varsity, didn't he? The point is they're a potent force that attracts, that attracts people who want to act in their name. And to the degree we ever diminish them, to the degree we ever don't take it seriously, that's the degree, that's the precise degree to which they're going to grow and attract more and more followers. Um, unremarked to me, uh, really by the media, it was, it's a very strange thing two weeks ago, the killing, the unfortunate killing this, of, of this uh, aged aid worker uh, by a drone strike. Very little of the coverage was about that it also killed the American spokesman for al-Qaeda named Adam Gadan, and he joined al-Qaeda, right? He joined al-Qaeda as a very young man, and what was it that made him join? Some kind of potency, some kind of potent medicine, some kind of potent elixir that attracted him. Now, we're not seeing tens of thousands of people do it, but my God, we know what 19 can do, Zudi. And again, these aren't Muslims. Remember, only 10 to 20 percent of Muslims go to the mosque. Right. These aren't Muslims that didn't go to mosque and nobody knew about them. Sky Simpson, again, was known to be at this mosque, a supposedly nice guy. Adam Gadon was at the Saudi-funded mosque in L.A. Yep. that the, uh, um, many knew who he was when he converted. They said he sort of became odd afterwards. Uh, certainly they, in those last steps as he becomes violent, Imam Awlaki was an imam at four or five different mosques from Virginia to Denver to San Diego. And uh, so these guys of that radical, when I testified to Congress in 2011, I said the initial stages of radicalization start by demonizing America. Yes, the hashtag absolutely. ISIS was using in the past two weeks, Baltimore uprising, right. uh, Freddie Gray. Um, those are the hashtags that they're using in order to say, well, look, 
America's racist against blacks, against Muslims, and they showed pictures of an act of a of a black Muslim with a white Muslim saying, "Look at you can work together for ISIS and not and against the racist in America." That's the exact same. You're, you and I are on the same page, Doctor Jess. So that's the exact same narrative that you get at most. You know. Learned, learned societies or, 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 or institutes of higher education that, that condemn America, that is the same stuff, that is the same narrative about America that ISIS and al-Qaeda use, which is what drove me so angry, what made me so angry when There's- President Bush, excuse me, when President Obama said both, t- twice really, when he said at the UN, when he, condemned, when he condemned terrorism in the same breath, he said, but in America we have our problems too, and he, and, he, and, he, and he mentioned Ferguson. And then when he went to the prayer breakfast and he spoke about terrorism, but then said, you know, Christianity and the Crusades also are not immune. It's the exact same narrative that you could hear from the fatwas and the speeches of the bin Ladens. That was their description of Christianity too. Somehow a thousand years was missed by both our president and bin Laden. But more importantly, who's listening? Who's listening to that? When, 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 when people in other countries hear the United, particularly Muslims in other countries hear the president speak about Christianity the same way bin Laden does, what are they to think? He wasn't addressing kids in America. They don't know what the Crusades are, right? Yeah, and then when you criticize that, they say, well, you know, we, we, this is a democracy. We can be critical. And nobody's saying that you can't be <laughs> right. critical of American policy. Of but the reason the Louis Farrakhan's of the world are very close and chummy with the Reverend Wright, who say GD America all the time, you know, it's because it's the same separationist mentality. Secondly, the... the Zudi, the hold balance. secondly. Hold secondly. I'm going to keep you one more segment. Yep. All right. Be right back. Continuing uh, our conversation with, um, you know, the teacher we all need right now, Dr. Zudi Jasser of the American Islamic Forum for, Demo- for Democracy. Dr. Jasser, uh, right before the break, you were going down a line. Go, go right ahead. If you want to start over, that's fine, too, for those that might just be joining us. Yeah, the demonization of America is sort of where it starts. But let me, let me also tell you, at, at a mosque here locally in Tempe last Friday, the imam went off on a rant about how America's racist, about Baltimore, et cetera, and how Muslims should unite with the African-American community that are oppressed, et cetera. The issue in a democracy is not that people can't say that. Of course. There's no balance. So if the imam had previously, the last Friday, talked about America being a force of good, talked about how we've liberated people in Iraq and Afghanistan, how much pride he has in, in being an American, that's great. You balance that and create an image of love first and then tough love other times. But there's only the negative. If our community is only getting negative, that's why there's more Wiccans in the U.S. military than there are Muslims, huh. because we're not being told that our forces, our police, are forces of good. So they're being told that it's all bad, so the identity is a vacuum, and it's the first step towards radicalization to get an Islamist national identity. Well, that's a very great point. You know, we just had this national uh, release uh, last week, on uh, the state of the nation's knowledge of American history. And again, it's, it's pathetic. It's in the tank. And so wh- where does that come from? That comes from two generations of treating America, teaching America as a down market commodity. All of our, all of our you know, uh, scars and, 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 and moles and none of, our, none of our benefits, none of our successes. And so at a certain point, one has to ask, what leads us to what you just said? Why would someone want to join a military on behalf of a country that they despise, right? Why would they want to do that when all we do is teach in our levels of higher institu- at our at our levels at you know institutions of higher education that 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 this country is is no better than and in many ways worse than you know Saudi Arabia or Somalia, right? That's why we have to look at this as an ideology that we're fighting, and that Americanism that fought theocracy from our founding fathers until our leaders, media, government, academia, get it in their head that we have to start. That's what our Muslim Liberty Project does. It engages youth 
that their American identity is the most important identity that will give them religious freedom. Nothing else will do that. Then they become inoculated against Islamism. They could never be radicalized if they love this country. One of the only Muslims at West Point is a board member on our organization. There you go. And, and that's why he's there. Now, he's very lonely. There aren't <laughs> that many Muslims there. But the bottom line is, is that this is the beginning of change. It has to start with a pro-Americanism. And it's bipartisan. This is We're not only conservatives. We have Democrats, liberals, and others. But it's about patriotism. No, I think that's right. I mean, it's about forces of composition versus forces of decomposition. It's about uh, forces... Uh, 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 for civilization and forces against uh, for civilization abuse that knows no party that knows no political ideology uh, you know there should be <laughs> there should be the ability to unite around a patriotism that can be embraced by both Democrats and Republicans and conservatives and liberals it, it really isn't that hard to do it's become harder it's become a lot harder because I think the narrative of the radical left has infused much of, moved into much of what used to be the liberal mainstream ideology and the main the liberal mainstream movement. So it's become harder and more difficult. But I think that's the toxic poison that has been breathed in and accepted by that side. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why it should be controversial to love the country that gives you the most freedom to do what you want and say what you want and speak what you want and think what you want. And, and to bring it full circle... You know, that the, when the Pamela Gellers of the world say that, well, we could be under Sharia law, all that, I mean, that's sort of nonsense. There's only two million Muslims in America. But these Muslims are living in a laboratory where if we actually engaged pro-Americanism and, and realize that they were the solution, yes, immigration is a problem, but when she says don't let any Muslim immigrants into the house, yeah. you know, that is actually a is pushing away the greatest resource. Of course. My, my closest friend on my Navy ship was a Vietnamese immigrant who had the highest security clearance, whose family understood what America was because they escaped North Vietnam. Those I are our greatest immigrant assets. And Muslims, yes, there may be our enemies that are Islamists. We have to filter that, but they can also be our greatest assets. Can you imagine the state of the world and the state of knowledge about the times we live in if we engaged in a policy that would not have allowed a Fuad Ajami into this country? Exactly. You know, we would, be, we would be dumber people. We would be a dumber people. We'd be a lesser people, as we would be would it not, had it not allowed your family into this country. But you're absolutely right. People who come here because they love this place often teach us things about ourselves that we forget. I do this a lot on my radio show. I play speeches from immigrants all the time because somehow they still have the idea of us, even as so many of us have forgotten it. Amen. I mean, my, my grandfather used to say that Americans breed democracy and don't realize the oxygen, and yet, you know, as he was escaping prisons in Syria, said they were waiting in lines to come to America because they knew what that democracy was. Absolutely, and I think that that's absolutely right. And uh, listen, <laughs> there's a reason boat people were trying to, you know, get to America. There's a reason they were trying to get to America and not to Saudi Arabia. Absolutely right, Dr. Jasser. Are you optimistic in the long run here? Well, I think it's like treating cancer. So many patients get a lot sicker before they get better. And I think that, you know, uh, these provocative things, the uh, increased conflict to the Arab awakening, Syria was dead for 50 years. Yes, there's much more death and destruction happening now, but they're alive for the first time. And I think as we get to this conflict, we're going to be a better nation. We're going to know what our values are and, and leave better legacies than currently sort of the stagnation that we have. Well, thank you, Dr. Jasser, for helping getting helping us get there. Do you like being on this side of the mic or your side better, by the way? Th this side. You I'm, do? There's no pressure. I, you know, you, you drive the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you had fun doing this, didn't you? I did. I, I loved it. It was a blast. Well, you did Both a little sides. you did a little too well if I if I can say so <laughs> myself, but you are my new official and permanent guest host um, on the occasions when I'm not able to be here. So, Dr. Jasser, keep your voice uh, in good health. Keep, um, keep your body and brain in good health, too. We need you. Will do. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, folks, uh, there, there is no reason, end of the day, there's just no good reason. It has nothing to do with violence. It has nothing to do with encouraging a violence. It has nothing to do with blaming uh, the victim. I'm not making that point at all. 
I'm making a different point. That is, there is no reason, there is no good reason to actively go out and insult at its deepest and most important levels an entire other religion. There's just no reason to do it. There's no reason to do it. Unless, of course, you're an equal opportunity offender in the business of doing just that. That's what political speech is about. And political speeches should be always the most protected speech. At that point, it's an ancillary part of your job, quite frankly. It's not your main motivation. People, who's ma people who have the main motivation of actively engaging in religious bigotry and insult and assault, that's just a different thing. It's not right. It's not right.